Hey y'all, I'm Kim Leggett, picker, stylist, and owner at City Farmhouse in downtown Franklin, Tennessee. Each month, we're offering a design team a blank canvas in the corner of our store and the liberty to style the space any way they choose. From outrageous to classic, you never know what you're gonna get. But it's your job to decide, is it a must or a bust? I'm Maggie Parker, also known as Magpie. Emily Morrissey, I'm Fat Cat. Fat Cat and Magpie is a collaboration between me and my sister. And we have such different tastes, yet when we combine them, we come up with something really fun and unique. We have this blank space. Let's do it. Have I'm ready. Paint. Let's begin. Okay, let's go for it. This is called an Anita boudoir doll. They were um, all the rage in the 20s. Movie stars had them. They took them to tea parties. I'm a big fan of mixing and matching vintage, well not matching it, mixing vintage china. There's something nice about that combination to me. of Emily and Maggie at Fat Cat and Magpie. They created a studio apartment. Let's go inside and see what they've done. Hey ladies. Hi Kim. Hi Kim. Hi Maggie. Hi Emily. I am so excited to find out what you guys have done in this space. Yeah. It looks like a little small studio apartment. Is, is that, that what it is? Yes. It should have that feel. That's what we were aiming for. Great. What's your, what was your inspiration for this space? Well, there's no one thing in particular. Uh, I myself live in a small cottage, and so it's very important to be able to create a, a comfortable feel, an impactful feel, and yet feel like you're not overwhelming the space with your, your life. And that's very important today because small spaces are so important. Uh, people are downsizing, and they're looking for ways how they can comfortably live in the space. So what, what, what space is this? Where, where are we standing now? Right now, we're in the outside patio of our little space um, where the person who lives here could come out and enjoy fresh air, let her cat come out and puppy come out and play, enjoy tea. Uh, I love the fact that it feels like an extended living space where yeah. when you're in this space, it feels like this is just an extension of it only you get a little more outdoors feel mm -hmm. to it. So great job. I love this part. I love this part. Well, let's go on over into your great. living space and we'll talk about that. Super. I already love this bedroom because I love this hat. Do you think it's me? Uh, it's you. I love this little case um, because it looks like it. And inside you have a collection of bottles. And bottles are very popular in design today because they're inexpensive, they're pretty. They're, they're pretty easy to find too, like most flea markets you can find a, a, a bottle. So I really love this, that you put this collection together. And it does tell a story and you've added a little photograph and that's, that's pretty neat. Good job ladies, well, I love you. it. <laughs> and again, you have managed to create a dressing area in this tiny space. I mean, this is so unexpected. I'm, I'm so shocked that you were able to create this dressing area. So tell me about this, what do you have in here? We have a... Uh, Things that a young woman 
might feel adds to her femininity, to the beauty and uh, ambiance of her room and her dressing area. One thing I'd like to point out today uh, are these boxes. If you live in a small space and you're a collector, um, what are you going to do with those collections? Uh, I get that question a lot uh, in, in design. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a collector and I have all these collections. My space is much too small. How can I incorporate this into my design? So these boxes are a perfect example of creating a unique art-like display of a collection. They're all stacked and they're, they're beautiful and they become like a, a, a fabulous design component in the space. Okay, I see you guys have a mantle in here, but you really don't have a fireplace in this space. So does that really work in the space? I mean, is it necessary to have a fireplace? Are you using the mantle as art? Or Tell me about totally, that. Totally, totally. Uh, who doesn't love a mantle? Even if you don't have a fireplace, everybody loves a fireplace. Um, you can, so you can decorate your mantle like you have a fireplace. A lot of people put lots of candles to get that feel in the fireplace. Uh, it's just, it just creates another sort of space to put some of your loved objects, decorate, give that, that ambient feeling to your, your living space. You know what I really, really love about this room? I love that mirror. It's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's an 1800s mirror, obviously. It's been well loved, well used, but it hasn't been tossed because that's why it's so awesome, because it has been well used. So where'd you guys find this? I actually found this from a uh, friend of mine, and she very willingly parted with it. I can't imagine that I can do the same, but it's a very unique piece in its height. It's a very commanding piece, so as we have it over the mantle, to draw your attention, uh, to the room. A lot of people use mirrors also to expand the feel of a room. When you're in a smaller space like this, use a mirror to help create the feel of a larger space. In a small space, you just can't fill the walls with anything and everything because then you're going to feel really closed in. So in this particular space, uh, you have chosen uh, artwork on the wall. Um, tell me about this. Uh, I love this because it, it creates a whole different design element to the space instead of collections of things hanging on the wall. So, who oh, did this? My sister is a great artist and I hope you all know this so. bird that she added down here. Just as a little subtle touch, but let her explain to you her work. The idea is to not get it too busy so that you can add some depth, a little bit of depth and ambience to the room and where you don't feel like you're, it's so busy that your eye does not know what to do with it. So the movement of the branches allows the eye to sort of flow through it to a little surprise bird and then maybe into some of the other smaller elements around here. Well, thanks Kim for allowing Maggie and me to utilize this space in the way that suits our inspiration, but I want to ask you, is there any one tip that you would say to people who want to design in a small space? I think the most important um, tip for designing a small space is to keep everything to scale. What do you mean? Um, if you bring into the space uh, large pieces, you're going to feel cramped and crowded, and you guys have done a fantastic job of bringing everything into the space that's perfect scale. Congratulations. Great job. I can move right in. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. What do you think? Do you think it's a must or bust? Do you think it's a must or a bust? Do you guys think it's a must or a bust? It's a must.